redemption's plan. What is it? Why is it? As we've traveled together over these designed devotions, we've realized that man transgressed God's way. He departed from the original design and plan. But let's review what happens when man sins. God had created man perfect. He was in harmony with God completely. The forbidden fruit is clearly and very easily seen when we look in Genesis chapter 3. When God comes into the garden in verse 9, And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Adam is hiding. And why is he hiding? He is naked. And he is afraid of God. Initially man would dwell happily with God. But now he is afraid of God. That's the first thing that sin does. Sin blinds us to who God is. And we see Adam and Eve going on playing the blame game, pointing to God as though he is the originator of sin, who has caused them to do evil. That's the first thing that sin does. Sin has blinded us to who God is. But that's not the only thing. Secondly, it has brought us into the dominion of the devil. In the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 16, we find a very beautiful principle outlined there. And in, in Romans chapter 6 and verse 16, we are told this. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto whether of whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? Man had yielded himself a servant to obey the devil, and he was taken captive of the devil. That's the second thing. We became captivated by the devil. We became his slaves. But even more, what it led us to is to have our experiential knowledge of sin, and we were caught up in the addiction or in, in the slavery of sin. And, and then finally, what it did, it brought a curse upon the earth. We find that God brings a curse upon the earth because of the sin of man. This is generally regarded as the fall. We fell from the highest state of being righteous, of being in the image of God, to being slaves of Satan and of sin. Therefore, what is the plan and tale in redeeming us? It is simply undoing all these things that we have seen. And how will God undo all that? Let's struggle together. After man has sinned and God asks and Adam answers in verse 15, even before the punishment and the curses are brought out before God, God preaches the good news first. And what is this good news? Genesis 3.15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. A seed is promised. Enmity is put between man and Satan. That's the first thing. Have you ever found in your heart you sin and you feel bad? That is God working because he put that enmity there. If God had not put it there, we would not have freedom from the evil one. But that was not sufficient. When we feel our need, it is so that we can be pointed to the seed, to the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. Let's look at a few highlights about who this seed is and how that seed will save us. In the book of John chapter 1, we find the story of Christ. And in John chapter 1, he is called the Word. In the beginning, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. This is the very one who created Adam and blessed him with all these things. But what happens with him? In John chapter 1 verse 14 we are told, And the Word was made flesh. God, the creator, took upon himself flesh, humanity. Why? That we was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And verse 18 we are told, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in, in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. That is the first thing. When we were blinded by sin, we did not understand who God is. But Christ comes back and shows us who God is. If we will know God, let's look to Christ. But even more than that, why did Christ have to take upon himself human flesh? In the book of Hebrews chapter 4, chapter 2, sorry, and verse 14, we find a very interesting point that is given unto us. And this is the point. That for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself 
likewise also took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power over death, that is the devil. The wages of sin is death. But in order for Christ to redeem us, he had to take our very flesh. And when he took our flesh, he was tempted in all points like as we are. Like as you are, he was tempted in every point. And why? That he might deliver you, that he might deliver me from death and the devil who had power over it. God laid on Christ the iniquity of us all. And Christ taking that iniquity upon himself died on the cross to take our sins from us. And when we come to him, he taketh away our sins from us so that we can be free, so that we can be set free. He is the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. But even much more, he does not only take our sin from us, he gives us his righteousness. For the book of 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us that God hath made him, Christ, to be seen for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God. That is a very beautiful point, that Christ not only takes our sins from us, not only is he made sin for us, but we are made the righteousness of God in him. Take that thought. If you take Christ at his word, he makes you righteous. He puts his righteousness upon you. But then the question is, how does all this come to us? One evening, an earthquake took place in a jail. And the jailer almost killed himself. But Paul and Silas were still in the jail. They had not escaped. The book is Acts chapter 16. And we find this jailer, after finding Paul and Silas have not fled, they ask him a simple question. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And Paul gives a very simple answer. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What does it mean to believe in Christ Jesus? The book of John chapter 1 verse 12, we are told that as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even as many as believed on his name. To believe on the name of Christ is to receive him in your life. It is simply to acknowledge, I am a sinner. I am sinful. I am wicked and righteous. But Christ is my righteousness. Christ is my helper. He that hath taken upon himself flesh and human flesh, when I believe in him, he comes into my heart. He lives his life in me. He redeems me from the curse. He died for my sin and he lives in me to give me victory over that sin. And even more than that, the earth was cursed, but Christ had a crown of thorns upon him. He carried even the curse of the earth. And when he comes the second time, he takes away the curse from the earth and renews both man and the earth. And then again, man is elevated, not just to where he was, but beyond, by the wonderful plan of redemption. And may God bless you.